In Greek mythology, Polyphemon used to invite tired travelers into a small estate situated in Attica. He would generously offer his guests dinner and a place to stay the night. But Polyphemon had a twisted mind and a very dark secret, much to the detriment of those who fell for his hospitality. He wanted a bed to perfectly fit the travelers who lay in it. Determined to achieve that symmetry, he did the following. If his guests were too tall, Polyphemon would decapitate them. If they were too small, he would stretch them, which earned him the pseudonym Procrustus, which meant the stretcher. One day, Theseus, the hero of this little story about justice, came around and flipped the script on Procrustus, decapitating him using his very own method. Now, what are we supposed to take away from this? Nassim Nicholas Taleb argues that we, the human beings inhabiting this planet, try to solve problems of great significance and complexity with the same Procrustean method. Instead of making the bed fit the travelers, we stretch and cut off limbs to do the inverse. One example Taleb points out are school children, who we pump full of medication so that they adapt to the unbelievably flawed education system, instead of altering the curriculum to suit the children. It couldn't be that the 10-year-old boy is not meant to sit in the same chair inside the dull classroom for hours on end every day, and when he starts to fidget he's diagnosed with ADHD, considered hyperactive, and has a learning disability, which of course needs to be corrected by tinkering with his brain chemistry. Situations like this are everywhere around us, and they often bear grave consequences. As it reads on the back cover, it represents Taleb's view of modern civilization's hubristic side effects. Modifying humans to satisfy technology. Blaming reality for not fitting economic models. Inventing diseases to sell drugs. Defining intelligence as what can be tested in a classroom. And convincing people that employment is not slavery. The Bed of Procrustes is a book full of aphorisms, most ranging from a sentence to a paragraph in size, with a thoughtful and potent message that revolves around this idea. The idea that, and I'm paraphrasing, we not only put things in the wrong box, we also change the wrong variable. You look at some of these issues and it's as if the common belief is that tires are round by chance. Glasses fit on our nose and ears by nature and we didn't specifically manufacture them in a way that makes sense. In a way that works with as opposed to against physics, chemistry, biology, reality. If the car breaks down and the fact that the engine overheated is beyond our comprehension, we might just come up with the plan to make tires square or pour energy drinks in the tank or push the car for a mile and be surprised when it didn't work as well as we hoped. And of course, we sure as hell won't be taking any responsibility for mistakes made. Because of the limitations of our understanding and observation, we constantly simplify leaving important factors out of the equation. We solve puzzles by squeezing pieces together instead of searching for the right place to put them. They'll take some damage, sure, but it'll fit eventually. From a distance, no one will notice anyways, except that the end result, the bigger picture, won't be right. That'll be another one of those unforeseen circumstances, fraudulent forecasters, advisors, and consultants who should be driving Ubers for a living if that keep mentioning. Taleb challenges self-delusions that we dearly hold on to and sometimes protect for a lack of a better judgment. The difference is that some people, hopefully like you and I, submit or rather change our views or at the very least consider a different perspective once there is enough evidence to support an opposing view and or disprove our side of the argument. Others are unreachable. Their stance is their stance. No matter how weak, pathetic and unstable, notwithstanding the least bit of scrutiny, they do not buckle. This seems admirable from afar, but in truth is atrocious when that person couldn't be more wrong. The most upsetting part is that innumerable intellectual yet idiots are in charge who fit this description. Taleb exposes their inconsistencies. Here are seven of his topically diverse aphorisms from plenty that stood out to me. The first one being, if you want to annoy a poet, explain his poetry. Thus I will try to stick to visual interpretation only. Academia is to knowledge 
what prostitution is to love. Close enough on the surface, but to the non-sucker, not exactly the same thing. Taleb elaborates in a footnote. There are exceptions, but there are also many known cases in which a prostitute falls in love with a client. To be a philosopher is to know through long walks, by reasoning only, a priori, what others can only potentially learn from their mistakes, crises, accidents and bankruptcies. That is, a posteriori. For Seneca, the stoic sage should withdraw from public efforts when unheeded and the state is corrupt beyond repair. It is wiser to wait for self-destruction. You exist if, and only if, you are free to do things without a visible objective, with no justification, and above all, outside the dictatorship of someone else's narrative. They will envy you for your success, for your wealth, for your intelligence, for your looks, for your status, but rarely for your wisdom. If your anger decreases with time, you did injustice. If it increases, you suffered injustice. On that last note, don't ever complain about me sounding angry or cursing too much on this channel. I have every reason to. You are free to leave if you don't like it. I would have a million subscribers by now if I cared more about a quantity rather than a quality audience. That being said, I would rather that you stay. Plato described Diogenes of Sinope as Socrates gone mad. Your miscomprehension of my benevolent fury will push me over the edge and you will come to know Diogenes gone mad. Now that's a name I want to live up to. Follow Nassim Nicholas Taleb on Twitter and get the bed of Procrustes if you want to challenge your intellect, potentially get rid of delusions and for the inherent entertainment value. As always, thanks for watching.